I'm the Accidental Brewer, and this is an episode where we're going to try to make some yeast starters. So the whole premise of this is that I was challenged by a friend as to whether or not a yeast starter with mead or wine, and we're going to try this with a mead, thus the honey, uh, would actually be more beneficial than just sprinkling the uh, yeast on the top. Now, I don't know which one will work which way, but that's why we're going to do this. Now, what I have is about half a liter of water. I don't know how many gallons that is, but I'll kind of put that down, down below. Some honey that I'm going to put in there to get it up to about um, somewhere around 1.06, 1.07. Um, and then I've got packets of yeast here that I'm going to fry. I have some Lawven B71, Lawven 71B, sorry, some EC118, and then some Red Star Premier Blanc. Um, and I've had really bad times with this Red Star, so I'm hoping that this will actually help it to work. But I'm going to put um, basically uh, an eighth of a teaspoon, which is about a gram, I think, uh, of that these inside of the starters what's wrong with you it's not going to be exactly how much i put in normally so i don't know if that's going to make a difference i might change my methodology let me think about this for a moment actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to put just like i would normally put half a packet in each of these starters and then i'm going to put muslin over the top with some rubber bands to keep it on uh, to make sure nothing gets inside of it i'm going to let it do overnight and then tomorrow i'm going to make six different meads. They're all going to be the same recipe. Um, some with, they're all going to have an eighth of a tablespoon of um, this and some Furmax, and we're going to see what happens. And yeah, uh, but to begin with, what I understand, I need to add some Furmax to this. So I'm going to add um, a little bit to the water that I am doing, so that's three-eighths of a tablespoon because I'm dividing this up amongst all three of these. And then I am going to put some yeast holes in here uh, just because um, that has been useful to me. So three-eighths of a thing of yeast holes. All right, and now I'm going to get my honey in here to see what sort of um, what sort of honey gravity I can bring up. What sort of gravity I can bring? Come on, Bill. Come on, buddy. Chill out. Uh, so I'm gonna put a little bit of honey in, and I'm just I'm just gonna get it up to about 1.06 gravity um, for this. So I gotta mix that in. I've got my paddle right here. I could shake it up. Shaking it might actually be a good idea. No, this seems to be mixed in pretty well. Mix all that in, get that kind of going, and then we'll see what the gravity is. I may want to mix, I may want to put some more honey in. I am using uh, McCoy's Pure All Natural Unfiltered Raw Honey Florida Orange Blossom Honey uh, to do this. So, um, so we might still need to do some mixing in there. Hopefully, this isn't too loud. Me sloshing this around. See what this gravity is like. Uh, I'm shooting for somewhere between 1.6 and 1.8. Put the lid on because who knows what would happen. Now I did sterilize everything that's here uh, just to keep things from getting crazy. Right on the dot, 1.07. That's fantastic. That's exactly what I was looking for. So now I'm going to divide these up between my canisters, and um, we're going to see what we can do with this.
Just gotta put this back in here first. Fifty milliliters. That is fifty milliliters, and I'll try to go for one hundred and fifty milliliters on this one. I should have thought about this to begin with. Um, I'm gonna have a little bit left over. See how much there is left over. Now, I hate to waste good sugar water, but I think that's what's going to end up happening here. All right, so I'm going to put the Walden. I have half a packet of Walden B71, 71B, Walden 71B um, here, and I'm going to put that in this one. in there. Mix this up good. Probably need some sort of agitation device to make that happen, but um, I don't have one, so I'm not doing that. And then I'm going to put this over the top just to be able to make sure that do my best to prevent like large particles or something from falling down inside of it or something like that while not creating a, an explosion machine. It's assess the window, not asses the window. <laughs> you put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. What the hell? No, 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 no! Uh, here, so that is the... Walden 71B, and I have labeled it thus, see, and uh, this is going to be the EC118, I'm just trying to move stuff off the top so I don't end up dropping some of that precious, precious stuff. Packet. That's about half a packet. So cover this back over. Oop. Got a little bit of yeast on my finger, which I don't want. Thankfully, I have everything sanitized here with some star sand, so um, don't have to worry about that too much. But again, going to uh, put some muslin over the top just to make sure that nothing weird gets in here. Um, there's a lot more muslin than I actually need for this and I'm not cutting this bag up because I can reuse it for something else. So all I'm going to do is just uh, yeah, put that on there and then put the EC118 label on and finally our red star and I need to dump this just to make sure I don't cross contaminate anything. Because that's not the kind of kind of show that we're running here. It's where we uh, cross contaminate stuff. But I'm gonna put some red star in and uh, we're gonna go for it. I am gonna try to use the same honey to um, be able to uh, ferment with. So that is, I know my super, super, super accurate measurements, but that's about half of a um, gram there, half a, half a packet, not a gram, half a packet, 
um, stir these up and then put this on and we'll be back tomorrow to show you what happened. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. Day two. I have 12 pounds of Sweet Squeeze Florida wildflower honey and six pounds of McCoy's orange blossom honey. I normally wouldn't mix them together, but I just didn't quite have 18 pounds of one honey and I didn't think that through when I started this experiment. So we're doing it uh, differently. So it looks like it is at 1.9, I'm gonna call that 1.095 uh, gravity, uh, which is great. Uh, that'll make it easy for us to uh, figure out what we're gonna be. It's a little bit higher than what I started by a couple of points, but it's not way off the uh, starters. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, take some of this honey out and put it in here so that I can get all of the other ingredients in. Um, you know what? I want my bottling wand on here. You may ask why. Why would you want a bottling wand on the tip of your... Um, uh, we'll wait. Alright, so you may ask, why do you want the bottling wand on your thing? I want to be able to control moving these from um, bottle to bottle. And that's what the bottling wand will let me do. Normally I wouldn't use a bottling wand to uh, set up between different fermenters. So, now that we know what the uh, ABV is, I'm gonna go ahead and fill these up. Once I've filled them up, then uh, I am going to add the yeast to them. So we'll be back in just a few moments. Okay, so here's, uh, here's what we're doing here. I have made these, for, you know, um, starters, and they've been going, and it looks like they've gone pretty well. They've done pretty good with the, the stuff I put in them. Uh, I am going to add those to the, um, the the ones in the back. So I'm going to add those now. And then I am going to uh, add the um, same amount of water each of these so that they should end up being the same gravity. I'll double check that. May have to pour some out after I mix it up. So, but that should include consistency across the bottles. I'm not necessarily looking for consistency across each of these three, just from bottle to bottle with the same yeast. Doing the same thing with the caps too that I'm going to use to shake them up. This cap goes to this one. This cap goes to this one. I got to take a little bit of that out. And this cap goes to this one. Put my stopper in each one. A little rubber band trick on each one also to make sure that we don't have any explosive stuff coming out.
to get a little of this liquid to come out. One of my concerns about this with this one, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more of the liquid out, make sure I test the gravity, and then I'll just end up throwing that away. concerned that I'm not uh, getting enough of the colony in there so I'm just going to pour the rest of this in. That should get us back to where we need to be. Hate to waste some liquid but uh, sometimes that's just what you got to do. Uh, and the gravity went up to 1.11. That is probably because of the stuff that I had in here yesterday. So we will uh, see how that ends up affecting the brew, but I don't think that it will affect the results. So I'll go through and make sure that the gravity for each is Okay, so one eighth of a teaspoon of the yeast holes also because um, I've seen some things that yeast holes may only just kind of kickstart stuff. It may not necessarily be good, but I've had pretty good results with them. So I am just uh, being consistent across the board. Um, what do I do with my cap? There it is. And finally, let's put the uh, yeast in, half a packet of each just like in the must before. And then uh, I will test each of these gravities and see, see, what they're, see where they're at. Okay, it's about half a packet of that one. Half of a pack, half a pack, half of a, half of a packet, of, half a packet of that one. That's the Red Star Premier Blanc, and then half a packet of the EC One 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 Eight. All right, so. Now I'm going to mix these up using the same lids that I did from the other one, just to make sure that all the ingredients that I just put in get mixed thoroughly throughout. Generally, you just need to kind of sprinkle them on top, but um, I'm just going to make sure that I don't have a bunch of crap just sitting on top. And finally, I just need to do the <coughs> gravity for each one. So I set the lids on top just to keep anything from falling in and bust out the gravity for each one. And then we'll call this one done.
So the gravity for this one is 1.1, one one, um, which is just fine. It is one point of gravity difference between the two. And I have sanitized all of this equipment, so I'm just going to pour this right back in. No reason to lose that. Sanitize in between. And then back off to the races. So. One dot one one, one dot one. Grab this one back here. so I can tell so that is one dot one I'm gonna say that's one dot one it's close enough it's like one dot one one dot one oh one One dot one, one dot one, one dot one, one dot one. <laughs> so far, I see a pattern emerging. Um, and two more to test, and then we'll wrap this one up. contamination. at 1.11 so 1.11 1 1.11 1 1.11 1.11 alright interesting I think there was probably more honey at the bottom of this than I thought there was that's okay
that's 1.1. 1 .1. So 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.11, 1.11, 1 .1, and 1.11. Uh, they're all within, you know, a point of gravity each. So I say they're close enough. Um, but that's it. We'll check back in on these in like maybe a month or so. Um, thanks for watching. We have social links down in the description. We'd love for you to subscribe and ring the bell so that YouTube will promote our videos. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and have a great day.